Well, good afternoon. I'm Robert Sumwalt, and I'm the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Joining us today, we have my colleague on the board, board member Jennifer Homendy, and we have the investigator in charge, Roger Evans. Before I start, on behalf of the entire NTSB, I'd like to offer our sincere sympathies to those who've been affected by this event. The NTSB is an independent federal agency charged by Congress to investigate transportation accidents, including pipeline accidents, to determine the probable cause and issue safety recommendations to prevent the reoccurrence of these accidents. We arrived on scene yesterday morning, and since we've been here, we've held a number of meetings. We've met with state, local, and federal officials. We've met, met with Columbia gas officials. We've held an organizational meeting to establish our investigative protocols and to designate parties to the investigation. The NTSB designates those organizations that can provide technical assistance to the investigation, we designate those organizations as parties to our investigation. And the parties to this investigation are the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, Columbia Gas of Massachusetts, and NICOR, I'm sorry, NISORS, Massachusetts State Police, Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities, and Eversource. We are very interested to understand the operations of Columbia Gas. We will be looking at their record keeping, their procedural compliance, their procedures, their training, the oversight of their contractors. We know that there was a pressure increase indicated at the Pipeline Controllers Console in Columbus, Ohio. There's a control room where the pipeline controller is for this pipeline, and there was a pressure increase noted at his console. Certainly we will interview that pipeline controller. We will develop a timeline of events going back several weeks. We want to go back three weeks and look at the odor complaints, complaints from the public about any odors that they may have noticed in this area as it, as it relates to gas. We want to see if there was an increase in the number of these complaints and see how Columbia Gas may have responded to those. We want to know exactly what the pipeline controller console indicated as far as a pressure increase, what time it occurred. We want to know when the call to the National Response Center occurred, when the first call to 911 occurred. So we will look and develop a complete timeline of the events surrounding this disaster. All pipeline operators are required to have a pipeline integrity plan. So we want to look at Columbia Gas's pipeline integrity program. We want to know any testing that may have occurred on this pipeline, any failures that may have occurred, any inspections, any repairs that may have occurred. We're very interested also in the emergency response. Pipeline operators are required to have a public awareness program. And they might mail this out in little brochures with the monthly bill. Whatever it is, we want to look at this program to see how effective it may have been. Pipeline operators, pipeline companies are required to work with local responders before an event to tell them where pipes are in the ground, what those pipelines, what the product is moving through those pipelines, 
and make sure that they have a, the first responders have a plan in case something happens. So we want to look at that element of their emergency response program. System safety. System safety of Columbia Gas is something that we are interested in. Uh, what, what, what was the safety culture of Columbia Gas and its parent company, NISORS? What, what were the organizational factors that may have influenced one way or the other this event and its outcome? What was the overall regulator, regulatory compliance history of Columbia Gas? There are 14 gas pressure regulators in this area. These are gas pressure, pressure regulators that are in vaults underground, accessible through manholes. We will test each of these pressure regulators and make sure that they are operating as designed. We've begun excavating sensor lines associated with these regulators to ensure that they are functioning as designed. We expect to be on scene uh, anywhere from seven to 10 days. And while our investigators are on scene, we will thoroughly document the physical damage, collect records and conduct interviews. Our purpose for being here on scene is to collect the perishable evidence, the information that goes away with the passage of time. So that's really what our focus is right now. We're not here on scene to determine the probable cause. That will occur at a later date. We're here to collect the perishable evidence. While we are here, we're not here to analyze that information and we're never going to speculate on the accident. Our mission, our mission is to find out what happened so that we can keep it from happening again. That is why we are here. And that brings up another point. I want to be very clear about what the NTSB's lane is. We are conducting the accident investigation. We're the accident investigators. We are not here to determine when people can return to their homes or their businesses. We're not here to determine when the gas will be restored. Those decisions will be a decision made jointly between the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities and the gas company. So that's not in our lane. We will keep you posted of developments, either through another media briefing or through our Twitter account. But meanwhile, I would encourage you to follow us at Twitter. Our handle is at NTSB underscore newsroom. And you can follow us on our website, just NTSB.gov. Before I wrap up, I'd like to make it a point of of thanking the hard work of the first responders. We appreciate all that they have done. They have worked very well with us and we are grateful for that. In just a moment, I'll call for questions. Before I do, uh, when I, what I'd like for you to do is kindly raise your hand when I call on you, state your name, your affiliation, and we'll go from there. So I'll be glad to take questions, starting right here. The, the question centers around the pressure increase that was noticed in the control room in Columbus, Ohio, and the information that we have right now, uh, we just know of that pressure increase. We will download the records from that control center and we'll see exactly the time of it and the magnitude of it. That is one of the things that we will do, uh, but we do not have that information right now. I'm, I'm hoping that we will be able to have that tomorrow. Who notified of that? Let me just check. Columbia Gas, did they notify us of the pressure increase? Yes, that's correct. Yes, thank you. It was Columbia Gas that notified us of that pressure increase. What was their reaction to that pressure increase at that time? 
what was their reaction to the pressure increase? That's that's precisely what we intend to find out. There's a question here. Number one, are 14 areas of like gas pressure is that like normal? Is that average? Is that below average? Below average? Above? The question is, there are 14 gas pressure regulators in the area. Is that normal? That's that's about normal. So we want to look at each of those regulators to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to do. When people are installing new pipes, should they have more or less? And that will be part of the investigation to find out if the number of regulators was appropriate for the size of this distribution area. As the boss of such a big organization, when you saw what happened on the television, what went through your mind? I could not hear the... You're the boss of a very important organization. When you saw what happened and all these people forced from their homes, what went through your mind? What is my personal reaction to all of this? It's absolutely devastation. Ron. So the question is, what should be the response to a pressure increase in the control room? There are procedures that should be followed. We want to look and see what those procedures are for Columbia Gas and then see if the reaction by the controller was the appropriate reaction. Just, um, I know you're, you're not here to figure out cause, but when you walk around this community, people want to know what happened. And they want to know that they're going to be safe when this repair is done. And I, I realize the complications of all this, but, but can you say anything about what happened so that people have some sense of, of security that things are going to happen? So Ron, can you, some simple, can, you give any explanation for can I give any explanation for what happened? And I hate to sound cagey, but that is exactly what we intend to find out. We want to find out what happened so that other communities don't have to go through the devastation that has occurred right here in this area. There's a question right here. What is the rough timeline for completing this investigation? Our investigations are, are very thorough. We will be able to determine probably the proximate cause probably pretty soon. What was the immediate cause of the accident? Maybe whatever that happened to have been. But we want to do a deep dive, and that goes beyond just looking at the proximate cause. We will look at the organizational issues, any possible regulatory issues. So typically, our pipeline investigations are anywhere between about 12 and 24 months. If we find anything that requires immediate attention, we have the capability to issue urgent safety recommendations. There's a question here. Do we feel the frustration and the anger? We are here to find out what happened. That's our goal. And I know from having been on way too many transportation disasters over the years that uh, it can be very emotional for all involved. Uh, we appreciate the working relationship that we have with each of the parties. There's a question here. Do, the, say that again. Does it, it appear to be suspicious in any way if something was tampered with? And also, how big are the lines? And how old are the lines that were feeding that gas? The question is Does there appear to be any suspicious activity associated with this? Um, we have no evidence at this time that there is anything nefarious, anything suspicious, anything intentional associated with this disaster. And the second part of the question is uh, How old are the, pi are the pipes? You know, there's cast iron pipe that's about a, about 100 years old, and there was plastic pipe that uh, that is that is brand new. Let's see if we have any questions here. There's a question here. Walters, WPPUR, local NPR. Um, so are you saying that it could take up to two years for people to find out what happened? Am I saying that it could take up to two years to find out what happened? Unfortunately, that is the, the truth. However, we will issue a, uh, a preliminary report uh, once we have sufficient information to report something. There's a question back here in the back. Yeah, can you come up? Sorry. 
So what should the reaction have been to a high pressure event? As I stated earlier, there are procedures that should be in place. We want to look at those procedures, see if the procedures themselves are adequate, and then find out if the response is sufficient. I'll take one last question. Yes, ma'am. Come here, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. This isn't gonna work. You gotta yell. I've got a generator back here, I cannot hear. Please yell. Yeah, was the pressure increased initiated in Ohio or was it discovered there? The center in Ohio is the pipeline, it's basically a monitoring situation. So that monitors the health and what's going on in the pipeline. So it was not, it could, we do not know what initiated this event. That is part of the investigation. So I've taken the last question. Is this a clarification? No, I, I'm sorry, I was Where was the pressure build up physically? It was just right in here. Yeah. It was it was in this neighborhood. That that much I do know right now. So we will keep you posted the best that we can, either through media briefings or through uh, our Twitter feed. Thank you very much.